So I've been feeling the need for the last maybe two days to just sit down and write. And I haven't done this in a while. It was such a surreal experience getting to see my book in store. It's just, it's crazy what life is. Oftentimes I tend to focus so much on some of the hard things going on in my life that when I take I'm in my backyard today, just, just taking the day slow. I am trying to do more of just taking things slow. I'm a person that severely, I guess could say is very ambitious, but in that ambition, I tend to just get lost in finalizing things and checking things off and i i'm trying to change that i love the fact that i'm ambitious i love the fact that i'm someone who v really much values chasing your dreams and going after your goals but i feel like it can sometimes be very detrimental if you if i fixate on them so much so rather than doing things from a checklist and trying to stay strict to a checklist. I'm trying to listen more to my body and what I feel in the mood for as far as trying to achieve whatever goals I have. So I've been feeling the need for the last maybe two days to just sit down and write. And I haven't done this in a while. It's been some months since I've just sat down and just written without a goal. 
without any sort of rubric of what I'm going to write. And I've been having this project of a poetry book for the longest time, you guys. The longest time. I have probably like 200 poems that I've never published, that I've never shared. And something within me has been pulling me lately to just work on this project. It's quite frustrating sometimes because, like I mentioned, <laughs> um, I'm a very ambitious person and in that ambition I create all these things in my head of things I want to do. And though that is beautiful, it can be very frustrating focusing on one or the other. So that's where following my body, following my intuition, really checking in with myself and seeing what it is that I'm in the mood for, what it is that I want to maybe do today um, has been really helping me out the last few days. So yeah, I've, I've been listening to my body and I've just been having an inkling to just write poetry and uh, revisit my old poems and maybe see if I can, I don't know, bring to light that project that has been in the works for so many years. So I felt very inspired to just write today, to write poetry, to just sit down and tap into my emotions and see what wants to come through. Um, I've been feeling very nervous lately, very anxious, uh, because next week I'm actually having a surgery. It's a minor surgery, but it's a surgery nonetheless. I'm getting a hysteroscopy I believe is what it's called and I don't think I've ever talked about this on here it's very personal but I just feel very inclined to share this um, but I've been struggling with my fertility and uh, me and my husband have been trying and have tried before and it has been very hard I, we've experienced some losses um, and we're at a point where uh, we decided to seek some help from a fertility doctor and after some studies it showed that I had some scarring in my uterine walls so I'm getting a hysteroscopy next week so I'm very nervous about that and usually when I'm nervous and just anxious what helps me is just writing <laughs> Um, and maybe that's why I've been feeling this pull towards just sitting down and writing. So it's been helping me. It's been very therapeutic. So needless to say, there's some big things happening next week already. And I'm feeling a little bit anxious. Uh, so I'm just sitting outside in my patio and just working on some writing uh, with no sort of intention in mind. I'm just kind of seeing what's coming through. And sure enough, the first poem that kind of came through was about um, my dad for some reason. Um, I tend to write a lot of poems about my parents and I feel like that's, as a first gen, that's where a lot of my experience comes from or a lot of my um, experience as a first gen is very much related to my parents. So yeah, that was interesting that the first poem that kind of came through was about my dad. It's not a bad poem. It's a good poem. It's a sad poem. Um, but yeah. So I'm going to continue writing uh, probably for the next maybe 30 minutes. And then also I want to read a little bit of my Patreon book club uh, pick for June. And that is The Honey Witch by Sydney J. Shields. I've gotten a little bit in already. And so far I'm enjoying the book. So I'm going to do a little bit of more reading on that. Um, and then later this afternoon, you guys, um, I am going to Sacramento because my husband has a fitting for a wedding. And also, there are two Barnes & Nobles in Sacramento that carry my book physically in store. For some reason, none of the Barnes & Nobles near me carry my book physically in store. So it just kind of paired up well that my husband needs to go to Sacramento for a fitting and then the there's two Barnes & Nobles out there that carry my book as well. So we're just gonna pop in there and look at them and see if I'm brave enough to s tell them that I'm the author and if I could sign the books. 
so we'll see so i'm gonna take you guys along but for now friends i'm gonna continue sipping my green juice and writing It is the next day. 
I wanted to do this little haul that I'm gonna do for you guys right now yesterday but unfortunately I felt super tired and I didn't have the energy to film anything so here I am the next day with a little mini haul of some things that I got now first and foremost it was such a surreal experience getting to see my book in store i don't know i don't even have the words for it it was so amazing it's just it's crazy what life is oftentimes i tend to focus so much on some of the hard things going on in my life that when i allow myself to do little things like how i did yesterday where i went and visited my local barnes and nobles the one that carried my book it just kind of serves as this reminder that i did that and that the hard things that i had to do to do that were very much worth it so i'm trying to hone into that feeling more of not paying too much attention to the hard parts of what life can be and just embracing that the hard parts have allowed me to get to experience some beautiful moments and yesterday was definitely one of them when i got to see my book in store so that was such an amazing experience i was too shy <laughs> to ask the uh employees at barnes and nobles if i could sign my book that's another thing that i'm dealing with which is a lot of anxiety so I'm hoping that I can overcome that fear eventually and to just be like, hey, I wrote this book. Is it okay if I sign it? Because usually at Barnes & Nobles when you sign your book, they'll put like a little sticker that says uh, signed by author or signed copy. So I was a little too shy <laughs> to sign it. Um, and also we're kind of in a hurry because my husband wasn't feeling very well. So we kind of just went to peep in really fast and it was like very, uh, it was a very quick browse. So I'm hoping I can go back or just visit other local Barnes and Nobles and just work up the courage to be like, hey, I'm the author. Is it okay to sign these books? <laughs> so yeah, it was a very quick browse, uh, but I still got some things. I got two books yesterday, two that I was not, well, one that I have been anticipating to get, but some of my more closer Barnes and Nobles did not carry it. So I was super happy that the one I visited yesterday did actually have this book in stock. And then another book, I bought two, and then the other book, it was kind of a surprise. I had never heard of this book before and it just sounded so good and something that was just so up my alley that I just had to get it. Also, I wanna showcase some other little things that I got. I actually got these, not at Barnes & Nobles, I actually got these today. Me, my mom, and my little niece, we went to Hobby Lobby just to peruse around and you guys, I, I'm just going to add these to this little haul that I'm doing right now because they just go very well with what my channel is about, which is about just books and writing and just cozy little things. I didn't film anything at Hobby Lobby today because I wasn't going there with the intention to film, but they're just so cute, you guys, so I just need to show them to you guys. Also, they already have a lot of fall decor at Hobby Lobby and you guys don't know this about me but i'm obsessed with watching content creators here on youtube that do just fall and autumn and spooky videos that is my obsession year round i love love watching content creators that their whole like channel and their whole personality is autumn and fall because that's literally me but you guys they already had so much fallout i thought about filming it but i was just like no we just entered summer <laughs> i'm gonna give it a little bit more space i'm gonna give it a little bit more uh, space for us to enjoy summer and then i'll start maybe doing a little bit more autumn fall videos but the anticipation was there you guys so i'm gonna start off with the things that i got today at hobby lobby they had a huge sale going on on their candles they were like 50 60 percent off so i got a very bookish candle and that is this one it is called bookends scented candle a wonderful aroma and i just love the little uh books on there and you guys it smells so good it doesn't tell me what the scents are or what they put on on here um but it smells kind of like kind of like an old library where kind of like it's a little bit dampy but like a good dampy like a scented dampy with maybe a little bit of i don't know like rain 
maybe it's raining outside and like a window's open <laughs> i don't know i think that's that's weird right but that's just kind of what it smells like like an old bookstore on a day where it was raining this is what this smells like i don't know if i'm even making sense but literally it smells so good and i just thought it was perfect because there's books on there and i love books i am also someone who loves to journal i love to scrapbook i love to do all things crafty in my journals i've been looking for some fun washi tapes and i got a few you guys they actually have some really cute washi tape at hobby lobby in particular i really love this brand called the paper studio and these were all these were all i want to say like 50 50 percent off or 60 percent off and they got these you guys look at this little butterfly here and then this with the bot botanical print and then this one i particularly just really loved the mushies on here like that is so cute this style is so me this screams me i am someone who's very much like a naturey dark academia cottagey dark dark cottagey type of person and this this is just me i am going to use these until there's like nothing left these i absolutely love and they were 449 399 399 but also they were like 50 60 percent off from that price so i was only paying like two dollars a dollar for eat for these so i had to pick these up so now the other things that i got from hobby lobby are more scrapbookish type of journaling things and i got these these are die cut stickers 12 designs which is super cool you guys and there's like so many of these that this is just my vibe like look at this vintagey rustic dark cottage these are like some of the designs that are in here I am just so excited to use these in my planner, in my journaling. Ugh, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. And then I got more stickers because I'm obsessed with stickers. I got this little sticker sheet. This is actually going to be a gift for someone and I just thought this was absolutely cool. Like look at all these designs you guys again very similar to what to the other one that i just showed you guys it says there's 36 pieces on here but they're just so pretty i love this i live for this type of design i live for this type of artwork <sighs> obsessed and then of course more stickers because why not <laughs> again from the paper studio brand i got this little sticker notebook that has a whole bunch of sheets on here actually let's open or oh, actually these are all the designs in here these are all the sheets inside of this notebook there's just so many you guys and i just know for a fact i am going to get such a good use out of these in my notebooks and my planners they're just so so pretty i am so obsessed with the paper studio they do a whole bunch of different design styles that i've seen but of course i felt drawn to more of the cottagey dark cottagey uh dark academia vintagey type of stickers so i cannot wait to use these so that's what i got today at hobby lobby again i just had to share because these are so cute you guys and hobby lobby if you have a hobby lobby near you they're always having sales which is so great because who wants to buy stuff Full price right now moving on to the book haul these are the two books that i got at barnes and noble starting off with the first one and that is shane lende by darcy little badger you guys i have talked so much about darcy little badger in my channel before i fell in love with the first book elatsoe which is the uh first in this uh series years ago um uh, maybe like four years ago i came across elatsoe one day at my bookstore and it just sounded so interesting the cover was just so beautiful and sure enough i bought the book and i fell in love with the story and sure enough it has become one of my most favorite adored books that i've ever read and finally the prequel to that book came out this year shane lende and i believe this has to do i think this storyline has to do 
before it lots away from my understanding just to read you guys quickly the synopsis it says shane works with her mother and their ghost dogs tracking down missing persons even when their families can't afford to pay their own family was displaced from their traditional home years ago following a devastating flood and the loss of shane's father and her grandparents they don't think they'll ever get their home back then Shane's mother and a local boy go missing after a strange interaction with a fairy ring. Shane, her brother, her friends, and her lone surviving grandparent who isn't to be trusted set off on the road to find them, but they may not be anywhere in this world or this place in time. No matter what it takes or where it takes her, Shane is going to find them. <clears throat> Darcy Little Badger does such a great job with just mixing in her um, Native American indigenous cultural roots with just beautiful fantasy elements. And that was exactly what Elatsoe was about and it was just such a joy to read. And this, this, I'm hoping I can get the same just uh, energy from it, the same ambiance. So I'm super excited to read this. And then the second book was a complete surprise, you guys. I was not looking for this book at all. I had never heard of the author never heard of anything about this book and the cover is what got me and immediately i was just like i'm taking that home with me and that is the prince and the coyote by david bowles illustrated by amanda mihangos as some of you may know i am mexican and immediately i already knew that this had something to do with uh latine culture and i just had to get this book especially after i read what this book was about so quickly to read to you guys what the synopsis says it says mexico 1418 meet prince alcomotzli puma of the akolhua people heir to his father's throne half akolhua half mexica singer warrior poet 16 years old and now betrayed a palace plot placed by the deadly tepaneca empire kills his mother and siblings puts his father's army into retreat and sends prince alcomotzli into a treacherous exile battling hunger, snow-swept mountains, and the machinations of the city-states all around him. Prince Akolmitsli vows revenge. It will take years, but he will return to seek justice, and he'll do it with a new name. Nesa Wakoyotl, Fasting Coyote, one of the most legendary figures in history. From the award-winning team of David Bowles and Amanda Mijangos comes a heart-pounding historical epic that is Gladiator meets the Song of Achilles, the Count of Monte Cristo, set in pre-Columbian Mexico. Illustrated throughout gorgeously by Amanda Mijangos, The Prince and the Coyote brings to life one of Mexico's most treasured heroes, Nezahuaco Yotl, in a story that will thrill readers far and wide. <gasps> You guys, there's nothing that I love more than my indigenous culture being shared in stories and fantasy stories and oh my gosh, I just eat that up. It just makes me, it, it just feels so beautiful. It feels so beautiful to read about your culture in such a beautiful way. This book also is so gorgeous and I didn't even realize like this existed under the dust jacket look at that you guys and it's on both sides this is so gorgeous and even all these beautiful symbolisms on the hardcover is just very much like ancient mexico art and i i love the representation i love it so much also i have officially discovered one of my favorite publishers and that is Levine Querido because it seems like some of my most favorite books are by this publisher right here They also publish Shane Lende, which they also published El Atzoe, and they're by the same publisher right here and and Hold on. Let me get the other ones. These are all some of my favorite books and Some of my most favorite authors that I have discovered because this publisher put out their stories out there These are all published by Levin Querido as well. So, let me show you guys, okay? So this is Elatsoe, and this is its prequel, okay? Levin Querido by Darcy Little Badger, okay? Loved. One of my favorite all-time stories ever, and I'm so excited to read Shane Lende. So that's Darcy Little Badger. Now, I first read Alebrijes early on this year, 
fell in love with Dona Barba Higuera's writing and her dystopian sci-fi world that she created in Alebrijes, also by Devin Querido. And then of course, I found out that Dona Barba Higuera had written another book that might be related to Alebrijes, and that is The Las Cuentista, also by Devin Querido. So, that's that. Also, forgot to mention that Darcy Little Badger also wrote another book, and that is called A Snake Falls to Earth. This is not related to Elazo, from my understanding, but also by Levin Querido. <laughs> and then now, The Prince and the Coyote by David Bowles by Levin Querido, which I forgot to show you guys the inside of this book. This has some gorgeous, beautiful, and dainty illustrations that are just to die for like look at that beautiful illustration <gasps> you guys i know as an illustrator myself i can appreciate beautiful art but please appreciate this beautiful art like it's so gorgeous also forgot to mention that this is a novel but also prose because the author is also a poet so as you can see there is some poetry on here which i am a huge fan of to read a storyline and also there are some chapters that is just prose because i love poetry and i'm a poet myself so i am so excited to devour this book but my whole point is friends that le bien querido which all these books are published by that publisher is doing an amazing job in amplifying diverse voices marginalized voices and bringing to the front stories from cultures that have been marginalized i actually went on a whole ramp yesterday and i googled them and i was on their website and they have it on their website how passionate they are to uh, publish stories from uh, a diverse set of backgrounds so it just made me so much more passionate about this publisher and the work that they're doing and rest assured, I'm going to be buying and purchasing more books that they publish because if they're anything like this little collection that I have from them, then I already know that they are just wonderful, wonderful stories. Also, side note, these books are so well made. Like if you buy the hardcovers, they are just some of the most beautiful and most well-made books like you know when you pick up a book and you could just tell whether it's if it's flimsy uh these hardcovers are just so sturdy and just they just feel so good the dust jackets are just so smooth and buttery and they just feel like a good solid hardcover so i feel like you're just getting something good for your buck so that's just like a little just side note i just really love how they make their books and i also just love that i've been able to discover some of my favorite authors through them so friends that's my little haul that i just wanted to share with you guys i really hope that you enjoyed this video if you love these kind of videos please remember to like subscribe engage with my content because that really helps me out as a youtube creator it really uh pushes youtube to push my videos out and to show it to more folks and that just makes it more accessible for me to be able to do this work. Remember friends that you can create the life that you want because you so deserve it. Thank you so much for being here friends. I will be seeing you in a video very, very soon. Take care and bye for now.